We're here with Ethan, and I want to find out more about the Survivor experience. Great. I've got to tell you, it has been a Survivor experience on the Great Walk to China. <laughs> yes. I've been very blessed to be on the, the six stages, and we're just about the, at the end of the fourth stage. And we've experienced so many different temperatures, etc. But one of the things that fascinated me about your Survivor experience, you said there was something like 300 people yeah. in the background making it happen and yet as we're watching it as viewers all we see are you guys as survivors can you share more about what happens yeah it's kind of like this set we're on right now right yeah <laughs> 300 yeah. people hey everyone <laughs> <laughs> one two <laughs> no. um, yeah i mean it's you would think that you know it's just kind of a couple cameramen mm. whatnot but basically those challenges you know uh, you know you're familiar with them but there's a helicopter there's cameras on you know cranes there's microphones mounted in trees, there's guys in camouflage in the ground, there's every, every actually contestant has like a camera on them, so you know, if there's 60 wow. people, then you got your producers, you got, you know, the guys who are in charge of set design, um, everyone is there, you know, so we're playing this game here and you see there's a whole audience out there, which adds, adds to the pressure and the drama. I mean, it just, it's, I'm sitting here, right, and I'm having a chat with you, Let's just say yeah. that you're back in that survivor landscape. No, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're back there in that survivor landscape, and let's just say that I'm a camera that's looking at you. Okay. How many other? <laughs> how many other people would you be able to see that we as viewers can only see you? Oh, I mean, I would. There'd be a whole crew of people. I mean, there'd be. You know, people, some of those challenges, the endurance challenges, mm -hmm. like whether it's standing on a post or leaning on something, they bring out lawn chairs and they're just sitting there and just watch you. And if Serious. it's seven hours, 10 hours, whatever. Serious. Yeah, you know, they're there and just, they're on their cell phones or they're writing stuff or they're eating or drinking. I mean, they don't do much of that because they're, they realize we're starving. Cause, yeah. So, but, <laughs> you know, strangle them for the <laughs> Exactly. Food. But they do, they try to bribe you to, to come down from the post by offering you like a cheeseburger. Really? Oh, yeah. That we don't see. No, no, you see that. Oh, because we yeah, see all that see broad that stuff. Yeah. Jeff that... Probst is like, hey, if you come down, I'll give you, you know, peanut butter and chocolate or something. I just thought you meant that maybe the crew were doing that. <laughs> no. Because no. I know he bribed you. Well, yeah. The fact that you've mentioned his name, he always seems such a cool guy. Yeah, he's, he's a yeah. totally cool guy. Totally he seems cool. very down to earth yeah. and very friendly. He I is. can't imagine anyone else doing that role but him. Yeah, I can't either. You know, yeah. I think he makes something incredibly. Uh, in America, we use the word cheesy, yeah. know, but incredibly cheesy, not so cheesy. I think he does a good job of, uh, you know, taking a, a TV show who's very, yeah. you know, Hollywood and making it somewhat real and have a little bit of weight to it, asking questions. But off camera, he's a totally nice guy, sarcastic, yeah. funny, you know, he plays <laughs> sports. He's, you know, he's a, he's a dude, he's a, he's a guy, you yeah. know. You mentioned endurance. What was the biggest endurance challenge for you? The endurance challenge we had was basically we had a, we were standing on a post, mm. and then we had a bracelet on, and a bracelet was attached to a bucket of water. Mm. So, and then we had to hold our arm above our head. And when our arm came down, the bucket of water came down, and that was it. Whoever, basically, whoever could hold their arm above their head the longest won. And that was the endurance challenge. And how long did you last? I went seven hours. Mm -hmm. And what? And I lost. <laughs> what kept you, though, with that arm up there for seven hours? How did you do that? And, and what was that feeling the second before your arm just went? Pfft? Well, what kept me up there is I didn't want to get voted off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though I kind of had in the back of my mind, I knew I wasn't going to be, but you, you need the insurance. You got yeah. to put that necklace on and know you're not going home. Mm -hmm. It's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, but what kept me up there was just, I don't know just the, the, the drive and it was a, almost like an internal challenge like uh, you just I'm gonna go until I can't go anymore until it's out of my control until my body collapses or something else happens and it was just it was a lack of concentration my arm must have just dipped a little bit and the oh. bucket came down you know you, it, so it was mental it was mental yeah, yeah it wasn't have, physical it was mental I mean I can't I don't I mean I, I really don't know but mm. it was probably a combination of both but I mean, I didn't like look away, and my arm came down, but it, at, the bucket just turned over, and so it must something must have happened. But and when that happened, what was your first thought? Can I swear on TV? No, <laughs> but I, I kind of got in here what you're going to say. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, got it. And then, uh, but you know, a little bit of relief too, yeah. like oh, thank God this is over, 
because they start at nine in the morning, so mm. they go right to the hottest part of the day. It's mm. like the sun's baking down on you. Mm. Was there ever a moment when you, well, no, backtrack a second. How was the, backtrack even more. Questions, questions. I'm a little kid at this point. <laughs> when did you know that you were going to win? Was it in the beginning? Did you no, have a knowingness? I never, you never know when you're going to win. Uh, I mean, I never really thought, I was never, sh you know, sure that I was going to win. Mm -hmm. You know, the first three, four, six days of the game, you don't know anything about anyone. So, mm -hmm. you know, and they strictly put you on a tribe with other people who you're going to bat heads with. You know, mm -hmm. I was on a tribe with this guy, Tom, who never met a Jewish guy before, and I happened to be Jewish. I was mm -hmm. a guy, this guy who was from inner city Detroit, a black dude, had never met a Jewish person before, you know, other, so they want you to bat heads. And so I could have been voted off simply for the fact that I had, you know, curly hair. You know, you never know. But I realized that, you know, I made a strong alliance. You find people that, you know, have skills that you do not, don't have. Um, they can, you know, basically balance what you're lacking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, once the game got going, I, I started feeling a little bit confident. But you can never be too sure, ever, because the game changes like that, just like life can change like that. Okay, so the, the filming of the last episode, before the break, before you go to find out who the winner was, and you're sitting there with the jury, yeah. and they're asking you the questions, yeah. was there a moment there that you went, yeah, I got it? No, even then, I mean, there was a moment where I thought I didn't have it, where this one kid stood up, this guy named Brandon, he's like, his question was, who is the one person that you think is least deserving to be sitting next to you right now? Mm -hmm. And I stared right at him and I said, <laughs> you. And he was like, like no one could believe I said that. My mom was like, oh, you know, why would you ever like say that? Because oh, I lost his vote. But you know, that guy Lex stood up and mm -hmm. he asked me the question. He's like, what's the first selfless thing you're going to do with the money mm -hmm. if you win? And I said there, right there on the spot, you know, I haven't eaten in 39 days. I smell like a giraffe. You know, my teeth are covered in moss. And I said there, right there on the spot, I'm going to use the money to start a charity mm -hmm. using kids and soccer to help mm -hmm. save lives. And I think that, you know, might have done, made, changed a little bit lives. You know, I mean, a little, might have changed someone's mind who might have voted against me. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people think I wouldn't follow through with it. And uh, I think a lot of people were shocked and surprised and also excited that I did follow through with it when I came back. And I did use that money to start grassroots soccer. When you say a lot of people thought you might, may not have, people that knew you, people that were on the I think survival? people on the show and the, okay. the fans. I mean, 22 million people watched the show. And I think it was, um, you know, a lot of people will say anything to get votes. Yeah. You know, people say, well, I'm going to donate all the money to start a charity or, you know, I'm going to give it to whatever just to get people's votes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people took a gamble and I did it. And I think, you know, I'm one of the few people that, you know, you know, stayed true to their word, you know, and proved that you don't have to be like an evil backstabbing pig to win this game. To win it. What was the feeling? couple of questions here before we go to a break. What was the feeling when you heard your name <laughs> as the winner of Survivor Africa? Yeah, it was a, I, I screamed like a little boy. Like all the energy came up through my feet and, oh, and I just, you know, I couldn't control it. I just mm. screamed and raised my hand. And I, I, you know, it's a moment that, you know, I'll never forget, obviously. And uh, luckily I have it on film, which is cool. I mm. get to watch it over and mm. over. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I screamed. I basically screamed and uh, couldn't control myself. Because that was the moment. That was the moment. From all those years beforehand, you knew you could make a difference. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, you know, Survivor and the Million Dollars was not an end. Mm -hmm. It was a new beginning for me. Yeah. Was there ever a time that you thought, mm, maybe I won't give all the money? Yeah, and you know, I mean, I, in the U.S., we do take taxes, mm -hmm. and you know, I did take care of my mom and my brothers, because you know, that's my family, and I had to sure. you know, be the good little you know, youngest brother, mm. or my brothers would have beat me down. <laughs> um, but after that, you know, I loved my life before the show, and, you know, I, I like my life after the show. The money wasn't going to change me or who I am. The money's going to go. You know, the title of Survivor Africa Champion, that will be with me forever. No one yeah. can ever take that away. Mm. And, you know, I lived in the same apartment for four years after I won the money with two other guys. It was a total, it looked, you know, bachelor pad, disgusting. Mm. You know, I had to wear shoes to my own shower in my own house and you know I didn't buy a car I didn't do it I mean I mean I just you know my life I tried to keep my life the same the money wasn't that important to me okay so it was easy to donate that money for me
Okay, you mentioned the word bachelor pad. Yeah. Now you've brought someone very special with you on this walk to Beijing, haven't I you? Have. Who yes, I have. Yes, I have. Her name is Jenna Maraska. Yes, and what's, um, apart from being with you, yeah. what's her claim to fame? One of them. Well, the non important one other than being with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, she happened to win the television show Survivor Amazon. She was the winner, of, which is the sixth season of Survivor. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we are an item. Mm -hmm. You know, my whole philosophy is, you know, two million is better than one million, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and that's why we got together. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and Jenna is going to join Ethan. Stay with us.